Hey YouTube family, it's Sarah, less of Sarah. This is my week 79 update post VSG or vertical sleeve gastrectomy weight loss surgery, which I had November 30th, 2012 in Mexicali, Mexico with Dr. Aceves. So this week's update is going to be pretty interesting, I think. Um, there's some good things and some bad things. It's actually mostly going to be about my weight and eating, um, which I, you know, most of my weekly updates haven't really been lately. Um, so let's get to it. The numbers. Uh, my highest weight was 460 pounds. Surgery day weight was 420. Um, last week I came in at 215.1. This morning I weighed in at 211.4, which is a two, sorry, a 3.7 pound loss this week. Um, 3.7 pounds is a lot in a week, uh, 79 weeks post weight loss surgery. Uh, it's really too much, to be honest. Um, and so let me sort of talk about the milestones that I, I've just recently reached this week. And then I'm going to go into why I lost so much weight this week and also last week as well. Um, yeah. So um, I've mentioned a couple of times in videos that my lowest uh, weight in high school, which was basically my lowest adult weight, or at least my lowest weight, like, after I was 12, was 212 pounds. I mean, 212 point something, I don't remember exactly. Um, and I believe that I was 16, I think I was 16 or 17. So it was 20 years ago, basically. Um, I'm 211.4. So I now am at my lowest weight uh, almost ever. The lowest weight I remember seeing on the scale, I was 12 years old. And it was uh, 206. And that's not that far away. That's like five and a half pounds away. Um, my goal weight is 210. So I'm 1.4 pounds away from goal at this point. Um, and the other really cool thing that I realized today um, was that my BMI is now 29.9. Which means I'm no longer in the obese category. I am just in the overweight category. Which when you come from super morbid obesity from a BMI of like 64, the idea of a BMI of less than 30 is pretty amazing. Um, I, I guess I, I was sort of trying to figure it out the other day and I realized I miscalculated because I was using 5'10 as my height and I'm not really 5'10, I'm 5'10 and a half. So if I calculate with 5'10 and a half, then um, my BMI today is 29.9. So I'm officially just overweight. Um, which you guys know because I talk about it. I don't really believe in the BMI scale, but um, other people do. And physicians, you know, use it as a measure. And so it's not the only thing that's important to me, but it is pretty pretty neat to be able to say that I'm uh, finally under 30 BMI. So that was pretty exciting. So what's been going on with me? Um, if you watched my Tuesday video, you know... Um, there have been some things going on for me personally that have been very stressful. Um, and also I've still been having some health issues for lack of a better term. Um, I think they may be gallbladder related. I went to my doctor this morning. She told me she wants me to come back and see her when I actually have uh, a bunch of symptoms going on because she said it would probably be better to test at that point. Um, so right now I'm okay as far as that goes. Um, but it has been affecting my ability to eat. Uh, it's kind of been, I'll have to pardon my French, but a clusterfuck because it's just been one thing on top of the other that is seeming to affect my ability to eat. Um, yeah, I have no appetite, number one problem. Um, and not only do I have no appetite, but often I'm just completely averse to the idea of eating. It's not even that I don't wanna eat, um, or not even that I don't feel like eating, I don't want to eat. Um, generally speaking, whatever I eat tends to make me feel ill. Um, oh, my alarm. Um, it, it just makes me feel ill. I mean, I won't vomit, I don't vomit, but, um, I'll feel sick for hours. I forced myself to eat a little bit of stir fry the other day and I literally had, was in bed for like two hours afterwards. Um... I just have a problem. I mean, a lot of people binge eat when they are stressed or emotionally distraught. 
I have the opposite problem. I don't eat. I can't eat when I'm upset. And so, you know, the last week especially, it's been bad. Um, you know, I, I haven't been tracking on my fitness pal and I wanted to explain that because I know a lot of you follow me and are probably wondering. I always talk about how important tracking is and why did I suddenly stop tracking? I didn't track while I was away. It was just too big of a pain. Um, and I meant to start again when I came home, but I... <laughs> I didn't want people to see how little I was eating. Um, you know, there were days I didn't eat solid food at all. Um, I'm not proud of that. And the last thing I would want is for someone who maybe doesn't follow me all the time to open my fitness pal and see that and think that's how I'm losing weight or that's how I've lost weight. I just thought that was a bad example. So that's why I wasn't tracking. I've tried to get back to it. I'm, um, And I don't want you guys to be worried. You know, I am trying to force myself to get in nutrition. I, I've been, again, trying to plan things to eat and, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I don't want anyone to be concerned for me. Uh, you know, I will not starve anytime soon, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been hard. And so it's been hard. It's actually been hard to watch the scale to go down because I feel like it is, artificial weight loss and I'm worried that as soon as I'm able to start eating normally again that the scale is going to go back up so I'm a little afraid of, of getting to my goal weight because I don't know that I can really call it at that point um we'll see it is what it is I guess but uh I wasn't sure whether I should talk about this but you know it's therapy time and I'm talking to you guys now, so um, I have talked in a couple of videos, one uh, specifically about having an eating disorder uh, in high school. So I weighed somewhere in excess of 250 pounds and um, because of certain things that were happening in my life at the time, uh, it wasn't even with being unhappy with myself, it was a way of controlling something in my life when I felt like everything else was out of control. Um, I just stopped eating. You know, I would eat maybe one very small meal a day, if that. Um, and I found I was really, I was really good at hiding the fact that I wasn't eating. Um, you know, I had every excuse in the book. Uh, and it went on for eight or nine months. I lost about I think it was in the neighborhood of 45 pounds, but that's how I got to my lowest weight. That's how I got to 212. I got to 212 by not eating. And so there's something scary to me about the parallel of the fact that I am now at my lowest weight again because of not eating. Um... And today, it, it it occurred to me that I need to be very careful that this doesn't become a mental issue. Um, because I feel like... <laughs> geez, I hardly ever have this problem, but I, I can't... I feel like it would be easy for me to slip into that behavior. Um because I'm kind of in that headspace. I, I do feel like there's a lack of control right now in what's happening um, in certain aspects of my life. And that is something that I can control. And yes, you know, when I put food in my stomach, I have a physical reaction. I feel ill. Um, but I also think that is not just a physical thing. I think that's also a mental thing. And as much as I haven't actually enjoyed watching the scale go down, I've also been terrified of the scale going up every time I step on it, knowing that that's not even possible because I'm not taking in enough calories. So I guess I just, I wanted to share that because I know that there are uh, a number of people in the community who are recovering from eating disorders and not even just you know, true eating disorders as we consider them, like anorexia or bulimia, but just disordered eating in general. A lot of us got to 
the weight that we were at because of some kind of disordered eating, whether it was binging or whether it was, you know, a, a food addiction, using food to comfort, whatever it was, um, a poor relationship with food, let's call it. I don't want to, I don't want to say just because of disordered eating, because really it's just poor food relationships. Any way that you are abusing food, uh, with your mind, you know, any way you're using it, um, or not using it, as the case may be. So, I guess I just wanted to be honest and put that out there so you know that you are not alone um, if you still have struggles or you still have issues. No matter what your particular issue is, you aren't alone. I know that there are other people in the community that struggle. Um, for me, it has not been a problem until now. Uh, 18 months post-op. But today was the first time that I realized it wouldn't be that hard to slip into that old behavior. Um, and that scared me. So, uh, again, it's something that I'm aware of. And, you know, should I at all think that it is causing a problem, I absolutely would uh, seek out help. Um, I'm not... You know, I just made a video talking about wanting to be happy, wanting to be whole, and wanting to um, improve my life and realizing that I had been holding myself back from so many things. Uh, and so I am I'm not willing to allow something um, like that to make me go backwards, I guess. Um, so it is something that I'll be watching out for and... Um, Something that I hope isn't going to be an issue, but I feel like that's the sort of stuff I have to share because it's not something that a lot of people talk about, but also it's one of those things that people, sorry, it's one of those things that people, you know, who want to say weight loss surgery is the easy way out. They don't understand that physically losing weight is not the hard part. And I don't know that people can really understand that unless they have been overweight or unless they've been through this. It's not easy, but it's not the hard part of this journey. And that is, you know, getting closer, I guess, to maintenance, that becomes more and more apparent. And I know that has sort of been my message, you know, for a long time in my videos. Um, the message isn't that it gets harder. It gets better, but the message is you have to work at it. A lot of people are committed to working at it for a short period of time. Uh, and then like everything else, that commitment fades. And it's easy to work at it when you're getting big results and you're getting people complimenting you. And when that starts to go away, it does get harder. Um, but it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. It will always, always be worth it. Although I had really mixed feelings today about stepping on the scale and seeing 211.4, there was part of me that was still thrilled. Um, I like the way I look. I like the way I feel. Um, I'm happy that I went back to my goal of, of 210 because I really feel like that is a good place for me to be um, pre-plastics. And it doesn't mean that I might not lose more weight, but uh, but I'm okay with 210 and I, uh, I'll be happy to celebrate when I get there. So I think that's it for this week. Um, looking forward to catching up with you guys next week. I have not had a chance to watch and comment on as many videos as I would like lately, but I'm hoping to get back into that soon. Um, love all of you guys. Thank you so much to everyone for your support. It, uh, it still means the world to me and, um, I hope I can give back just a fraction of what you guys have given to me. Love you. Bye.